to do is hold order so we take so we take the roll call, please. Ms. Deroff. Mr. Hemingway. Here. Mrs. Hogan. I'm here. <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> Mrs. Hogan. Present. Ms. Nyman. Here. Mr. Pinarello. Here. Mr. Uptogrove. Here. Mr. Zalata. Here. And Mr. Brophy. Here. All present. Okay. So next, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence, please. The subject of today's meeting is Region 1 School Board Director Candidate Interviews. We have nine candidates here for this. The following residents have submitted an application for Region 1 School Board Director and will be interviewed in the following order. Robert Hope, Marianne Scott, Joseph Kincaid, Paul Lopez, Deborah Staten, Stapleton, Tara Chrisman, Andrew Moyer, Brooke Merkel, and Kevin Patton. And they're being interviewed in the same order that their, uh, their, their applications came in. Okay, so we'll be doing the interviews one person at a time. Those that are not here will be sequestered away in another room. Uh, a couple things for board members. We are not allowed to debate the, the candidates. That's not allowed, and we also cannot ask follow-up questions. So the questions that will be asked here are what will be answered, and that's what you have to base your decisions on. Uh, the reason for the follow-up, no follow-up questions is everybody has to be asked the same questions. So if you start having follow-up questions that can get real out of hand really fast. So unfortunately, that's how it has to be. So I will be asking the questions as we go through for expediency, since we have nine candidates. Uh, hopefully that's okay with everyone, but we want to try and get it through to try and be as, as quick as possible with this. There's a, there's a lot of people to go through tonight. So if you could please bring in Mr. Hope. Mr. Help, here you'll be up here. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Oh, thank you for putting it for the position. Uh, it's a it's a trying time right now. Uh, we're going to ask you five questions, and I'd like you to answer them to the best of your ability. Now there'll be no debating with you over them, and there'll be no follow up questions. Just so you know, you'll be answering these questions, and the board members will be taking their notes based on those answers. Okay. Okay. Question one. How has your background and experience prepared you to be, on a, to be, a, board, to be a board member? Well, I think well, the experience I've had in business from developing multi-million dollar budgets to dealing with contracts with vendors, negotiating union contracts, working closely with people in all the departments for all the years I have uh, make me uh, qualified 
to cover a lot of bases and be advantageous in a lot of areas that I've developed over my years of business experience. And that along with my ability to take a diverse group of people and getting working together for the same common goal seems to be an attribute that I've always had. So those are the reasons why I think I would be. Okay. Thank you. What objectives do you wish to accomplish as a board member? To make uh, the environment for the students the best possible mm -hmm. while still maintaining it to be cost effective for the taxpayers. Not to go out and go crazy on things that would be nice to have but force people, especially with the economy and everything the way it is now, into dire financial straits. And make it as strong uh, an, a, a learning environment for the kids as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. What is the role of a school board and what is the role of an individual school board member in, in your mind? Well, I think the role of the school board is basically something I said earlier about providing the best possible environment for the students uh, at a price that the taxpayers can afford. And I think it's up to the individual board members to be open-minded uh, and looking at what's best in those directions for those individuals, the students, the teachers, and the taxpayers. Okay. What do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? Um, without knowing for sure, I would think the constant inflation of costs, uh, vendor prices going up, uh, trying to maintain a budget that is acceptable to continue to provide the best possible education and environment for the students, no matter whether they want to go to college or get into the trades, but to be able to provide that for them at a price that is uh, uh, acceptable to the school district. Having been born and raised and living here all my life, I think I have a pretty good feel on the mentality of the people in the area, what their culture is like, and everything else. Okay. Okay, and, and question five. You may be appointed to the school per position through this process. If you had to run for the position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? Uh, that I'm pro student slash taxpayer and want to, it will provide the best possible environment for the kids, students, and teachers to matriculate uh, at a price that is reasonable and can be afforded by the taxpayers. Okay. Okay. Th thank you very much. There are the five questions. Uh, I think at this point we'll do it. We have we have what you had to say here. So we'll move. We're going to move to the next candidate okay. at this point. May I ask a question? What's that? Yeah. Oh yeah, you you can you can. I'm sorry, you don't have to leave the room. You can you can sit over there and stay there. Uh, now that you're done, you're done with your interview. So. Is there a reason to stay? Will there be a decision made tonight? Or? There there will be a decision made tonight. But if you if we have your contact information, okay, we could also get a hold of you there. So it's, okay. up, it's up to you if you stay. There's there we provided seats for you over there if you wish to stay, and if you don't, we will we would contact you. Okay. Thank you for your time. Wait, thank you, thank you, thank you for putting in. Okay, next candidate. Mary Ann Scott. Yes, I Thank am. you for putting in for the position. Uh, same thing I will tell you that I, I've said since you, you, you can't hear what I'm saying before this. Uh, the, you will be asked five questions by, I will be asking, the board will be taking their notes. Okay. Uh, there will be no follow-up questions to those, and we won't be debating your answers. So your, your, question, your answers will be what we'll be taking, you know, taking off and, and writing down things. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So first question. Yes. How has your background and experience prepared you to be a school board member? Okay, um, it, the preparation I've had a lifetime of working with the public and owning a business of my own 
also spending 10 years in a private school setting, getting to know the operation of schools, the interaction between parents and students, and uh, mostly the interaction with children, with kids, with teenagers. And that's been a lot of my heart most of my life, and uh, even employing teenagers. I've always felt like I've been an individual that just likes to encourage and and just push them to, to do the best that they can do. So that's been my mindset, and that's kind of what led me here. I thought, hey, Boyertown's a great place. We have a good school, and just want to be a good asset. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. next question. Okay. Uh, what objectives do you wish to accomplish as a board member? I think as a board member, um, the climate today in the boards are, is difficult. What I would like to to see happen, you know, Boyertown's come a long way. I've been in this this area for 33 years, and and at one time it wasn't a strong community, and then it became a really strong community. I know my neighbors' kids, I know teachers, I know people that work here, and in the community, and um, and lately I feel like there's a lot of, you know, you know. There's a lot of things going on in a lot of the school boards. It's not just Boyertown, and I don't even know the extent here. But I, I, I don't want to see that cohesiveness and that community um, fade away in this area because we need to be strong, and we can only be strong together. And when we start to fight over little things, it, it can take something away from our kids. And they're really our prime reason that we're all here so that our kids grow up in a cohesive, balanced, nurturing um, community where everyone works together. We don't always have to see eye to eye, and we won't always see eye to eye, but we can work together to make things work. Okay. So. Hey, thank you. Uh, what is the role of a school board, and what is the role of an individual board member? I think a board member needs to be very committed to it. There's a lot of work here. Um, I, I, the board kind of becomes the liaison for the parents, for the teachers, for the administration, uh, for the students uh, to keep us, uh, you know, a, a board member needs to have an open mind, needs to see whole pictures, can't just be focused on this or this, but must always keep the student in mind and remember that the parents are the ones that are the stockholders in this in this school and be open to hear what they have to say be open to receive and then be open to come up with solutions that work for everyone okay thank you uh, question four what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? Today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, probably the mass and some other things that may be going on with our kids. I think that is a big challenge, but it doesn't, I don't feel that it has to be. I think we can come up with a simple solution that keeps everyone happy. Um, we just take the data, we take the facts, and we make a common sense decision. Okay, and the fifth question, final question. You may be appointed to a school board position through this process. If you had to run for this position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? Anytime you don't huh. understand a question, you can you No, can no, answer. I understand. So you okay. want to know how I would campaign, yeah, what my campaign. Pretty much, yeah. I think you're looking at someone that I, I am a committed person. If I'm going to run for a position, I'm going to take it very seriously. I um, consider myself someone with a lot of integrity. I'm not going to. I'm going to be very transparent. I do not falsify or, you know, tell tales or anything like that. I'll be upfront. I can handle difficult situations. I've been in many of them in my life, so I can handle difficult situation, confrontational things, and not and not feel threatened by it. So I think the community can rest assured that I would their what their needs are would be my first foremost. What the kids' needs are would be my first consideration always. Okay. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, we're gonna, we'll move on. You you can stay here if you'd like. Uh, okay. If you don't have to, we will contact you, if, right. you know, if you're the candidate. So thank you for your thank interest you. in this thank you. and appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, next candidate. Okay. Okay. Uh, Joseph Kincaid. Yes. Okay. Uh, just to give you the same thing I tell everybody else is we will, we will be asking you a set of five questions. Very good. We'll be answering. We, uh, as, as the board cannot issue follow-up questions to you, as that is, we can't, just can't do that. And also, there will be no debating your answers. So whatever you tell us is what we'll be writing down, and that's what we'll be moving forward. Uh, so if you're ready, I'll start the question. Certainly. Okay. How has your background and experience prepared you to be a board member? So my background is that I started, I graduated high school here in Boyertown in 2002. Um, I then held multiple positions in many companies. Took that to the point where I've now uh, have four businesses that I own locally and run them successfully. Um, part of that is it's prepared me to make tough decisions when they have to be made. Okay. okay. Uh, second. Uh, what objectives do you wish to accomplish as a member? One of the objectives that I, I hope to accomplish is uh, fostering a good relationship from the community and, and bringing a community voice and being part of the decision-making process for the members of the region that I would represent. Um, hoping to bring their voice here to the board and make sure that their views are, are heard adequately. Okay. Okay. So what is the role of a school board and what is the role of the individual school board member? My vision of what a, the role of an individual uh, school board member is, is the voice of the community of which they serve. Um, it, that, that's exactly what they should be doing on a, on a daily basis. As far as the role of the board, they're part of the decision-making process to make sure that what the community wants is upheld and served through the, through the administration to uh, better the community and better the environment for the students. Okay. okay, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? Fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, you may be appointed to the school board through this process. If you had to run for the position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? I'd like to be your community voice. Uh, I have children in the community. I have two children that are currently in school, second grade and a kindergarten. I also have many nieces and nephews that are in the community and in schooling. I would be their voice to make sure that what they want is what happens. Okay. Great. Okay, well that's, that's all the, for the five questions. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can, if you want to stay, we have seats over there. You're not required to. Okay. Uh, if you would be, the, if you would be a selected candidate, we would get a hold of you. So, uh, like I say, if you want to stay, that's fine. If you don't, that's also entirely up to you. Thank you all for your time. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Next candidate, please. Yeah, he's watching over my back here. Yeah. Right up here, Mr. Okay. Hi, Mr. Lopez. Uh, well, uh, welcome, and uh, thanks for putting him for the position. Uh, just to tell you how, how we'll work it is we'll ask you for a set of five questions. Board members are not allowed to debate your answers, nor can they ask you follow-up questions. So we'll be basing everything 100% on what you tell us from the questions. So if you have anything you know, else, 
uh, you know, you want to get it all in, in, in those questions. So if you're ready, I can start with the questions then. Yeah, do I need to pray? Oh, I guess yeah, not. You're, yeah, you're on already. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, first question is, how has your background experience prepared you to be a board member? Hmm. Well, I don't have any experience as a board member at all. Um, prepared me? Well, that would just be my life experiences, I think. Um, worked at a lot of different jobs. After I graduated from high school, I uh, took some time off and uh, I probably did something like 30 different jobs mm -hmm. and uh, lived in Philadelphia for about 20 years mm -hmm. and uh, uh, had a lot of ambitions and, and uh, <laughs> that turned into learning experiences. And then um, uh, I saw that uh, I probably would do a lot better for myself if I got a, a formal education. Mm -hmm. So I uh, started into a formal education and uh, decided that I wanted to be a veterinarian and uh, a dairy cow veterinarian specifically. And that's where I directed myself from there. And that of course brought me through, uh, not just through the um, college and veterinary school, but uh, the research associated with it. I did some uh, research. I worked in um, studying parasites and, um, and uh, parasitic nematodes. Anyway, um, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And um, working as a, as a veterinarian, I worked out in Texas. And uh, that was, um, a pr it's a pretty different place there than it is here. And uh, so I got to be around a lot of different cultures. Worked in California and New Mexico and Kansas and some of the most remote areas uh, imaginable, really. Just miles and miles of nothing. And uh, different people, different viewpoints. Uh, Sometimes I agreed, sometimes I, different, I didn't agree, but uh, it was always something that you could take away from it. And uh, I guess those are my cumulative life experiences. Oh, well, I ended up wanting to come home. Uh, my wife was from Hershey, and we wanted to uh, be home, Pennsylvania being home, to raise kids. And uh, so uh, we moved back here, and uh, I left my private practice that I'd started in Texas. And, um, and uh, we uh, moved on to my grandfather's farm in Yellow House. And that's where we are. We've been there since 2008. And uh, where we, uh, well, I guess I went from being a veterinarian to being a dairyman. Yet another change in life. Um, so I've got to deal with lots of different people. And probably the thing that's changed my, uh, formed my perspective more radically uh, this having my own children. I got two daughters. Both of them go to uh, school here in the t district. And uh, that changed my perspective a lot. If anybody has children, you know how that works. You know? So it made me care a lot uh, about different things. Um, my, like I said, my parents were teachers, and so I've always had this sort of uh, mm, put a high value on education that they kind of instilled in me. And when I got the letter, I thought, well, maybe this would be an interesting way to serve the community. OK. Uh, second question. What is the role of the school board, and what is the role of the individual school board member? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I wrote over my question. OK, I'm sorry. What, what objectives do you wish to accomplish as a, as a board member? I don't have specific objectives. Yeah. Yeah, that I wish to accomplish here as a school board member. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I didn't know if I was going to be asked if I had any questions to <laughs> ask you. I, that was a couple of the things. I, I've got several here. Uh, objectives? Well, uh, I don't have anything specific. It would be more of a big picture. Uh, serve the community uh, to uh, help the, uh, to be a part of the um, improving the education of uh, our children. Uh, advocate for the, the best solutions. Okay. Now let me go to the one I started there. Uh, what is the role of a school board member, of a school board? What is the role of a school board and what is the role of the in individual school board member? That's funny. I was going to ask you that. I'm serious. What's that? 
I was going to ask. That was one of my questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really quite new to this. If uh, there's experience or background knowledge that's required, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be your guy. Uh, my, my only experience with uh, the school boards is I watched the last meeting that was up on YouTube. And that's it. So I'd be kind of new to this. Okay. All right? Yeah. Uh, it's a fair answer. Okay. What do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school boards? Okay, I'm going to draw upon what I saw in the last meeting. I saw budgetary questions. I saw complex questions involving uh, parties that had uh, a lot of stakeholders, right? The community, the students, the teachers. Someone even brought up the janitors and the and the bus drivers. Sympathy for that. The community at large. That's a lot of that's a lot of interests that have to be served. That's complicated. It's hard, hard to make everybody happy. I don't see it happening, really. I just see some sort of like best solution hobbling through. That's the process. Um, that's about as much as I could glean from that meeting. Mm -hmm. Looked like there were a lot of strong feelings too. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's. Um, what happens at every meeting? That's actually one of my questions here. Like, uh, the, is that usual, or is that just one meeting? I, uh, but uh, so sorry, I don't have. A, I don't, I'm not prepared to give you more than that. Okay. Uh, fifth question. Uh, you, like you may be appointed to a school board position through this proposed through this process. If you had to run for the position. What would have been your message to the community in the uh, efforts to gain their votes and secure the uh, and secure the uh, election? Well, that would put the quality of uh, our children's education first. Um, then I would do my best to uh, prepare myself uh, with um, any background reading I need to do. Uh, I'm big on data. I'm big on uh, uh, making informed decisions. Uh, I'm big on uh, arriving at uh, consensus. Um, uh, I'm, I like to think I'm a good listener mm -hmm. and that I process complex issues uh, by uh, gathering, assimilating mm -hmm. ideas and, uh, and acting with that. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best we can do. Maybe it's not a good political pitch, but... Uh, it's not a simple bumper sticker thing, but that's that would that's what my approach would be. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, thank you. And now, if uh, if you want to stay, there's seats over there for the candidates. You can stay and watch. If you don't, if you would be the selected candidate, we would we would get in touch with you. So uh, it's up to you if you want to stay or you want to go. Uh, if you stay, you can listen to what everybody else says. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that's entirely up to you. Okay. But thank you for your thank you for your time and coming here tonight. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Next candidate, please. Here, Miss Stapleton. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. That seat right there. Okay. Again, thank you for showing interest in this position. Uh, there are a couple things, just so you know how, how this works. We will ask you a set of five questions. Okay. 
Uh, everything will be on your answers. We will not ask any follow-up questions, nor we will debate. So pretty much what you tell us is what we're, what we're okay. going to go on. Okay? Thank you. Okay. So thank you. So if you're ready, I'll start with question number one. Okay. Okay, thank you. Has your background, how has your background and experience prepared you for, as a, to be a school board member? For 30 years, I've owned a dance studio in the Boyertown area, working with children from the ages of three through roughly 18, graduating senior high. So I've always worked with children. And what piqued my interest about coming in here tonight was that I almost feel a parallel uh, applying for this position in working with and for the betterment of the children as what I do in the dance studio. And in my dance studio in 30 years, this is my personal choice. I have never ever taken a paycheck from that business that I put everything back into that business to make it the best business I can for those children to make sure they have everything they need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, second question. Okay. Okay. What objectives do you wish to accomplish as a member? Um, that's a tough one <laughs> because I've always been a big supporter of public education and mm -hmm. teachers. I've had three children that come came through Boyertown and they're all gainfully employed in different facets of life. So I feel mm -hmm. that what you're doing is the right thing to do. And um, what I would want to accomplish is just to be part of continuing it to move forward in a positive role as the world changes. And um, just to be there for the kids as my time is freed up a little bit more, I feel like it's a time for me to see if I have anything to contribute to the betterment of the children coming through the Boyertown School District. Mm -hmm. Okay, right, thank you. Question three. Okay. What is the role of, a school, of the school board and what is the role of an individual school board member? I think one of the things about myself is that I, I think I can be very open-minded to listen to what your opinion might be and what my opinion might be, and even if they are differing opinions, it's worthwhile to listen to what you have to say that maybe it would change my mind. So as a school board member, I think that we all need to listen to each other and completely hear each other out and digest what they've said and maybe you didn't come into that thinking the same thing as what your next door neighbor on the school board member school board might have but there might be some very worthwhile points and attributes that you could take away from that and then i feel that all of the members of the school board are the gel that holds that makes the board as a whole that they need to work together and find a resolution to make boyertown you know a great school district I hope that answered it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, question four. Okay. What do you see as the greatest challenging challenge facing the school board? Hmm. I think, honestly, it's everything that's going on with COVID right now. Um, one of the things that I've seen in the studio, and I can honestly say it truly breaks my heart, is that the kids, I don't think they're in a good place right now mentally and all i want to do is love them hug them and support them and tell them it's all okay you know and we need to be there for the kids and we need to have a consistent school setting for them and an emotional setting for them and i think that the more that they can be out in the real world with each other they'll find that it's all going to be okay there's too much anxiety in their lives right now there really really is i'm with them four days out of five, and I'm with hundreds of kids, and it's, they need some love. Okay. Okay, question five. Okay. Uh, you may be appointed to a school, a school board position through this process. Okay. If you had to run for the position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? Um, I think my message would have been that we're going to agree to disagree at times. Um, 
because we are all individuals and that my my goal is to and i've said it a couple times is to make boyertown schools a place of solace for these kids you know that they want to come in here and they want to come to school every day i have five grandchildren and i have three of them currently in boyertown one ready to come in next year and um I have to say they love going to school. I mean, even even the boys, you know, which <laughs> and they can't wait to go to school and it just my heart broke when everything was shut down. I totally understood why. No judgment passed on that, but my heart broke for those kids and um I'm so grateful that they're in school learning every day. And that would have been my goal to keep them in school and to give them a healthy, loving environment in school and a great education. Okay, so that's the, that's the five questions. I want to thank okay. you very much. Now, if you want to stay, there are seats over okay. there. You can stay. If you don't, we would contact you or get in touch with you if you okay. were if you were the selected candidate. Again, thank you for your time You're putting welcome. in here tonight. All right, thank, thank you for your time, ladies okay. and gentlemen. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for a five minute break at this point, and then we'll 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 get back in here in five minutes. Thank you. Okay, everyone. We'll be back. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Crispin, thank you for coming out tonight and then put into this spot. Uh, a couple things for you. Uh, we'll, we'll be asking you a set of five questions. Sure. And we will go strictly on your answers because the board will not be asking any follow-up questions, nor will we will be debating anything with you. So any anything, any question you have, we ask you how you answer is how we're going to be moving forward. Okay? Got it. Great, thank you. Okay, let's start first question. Everybody's ready? First question. How does your background and experience prepare you? No. Oh. The microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, how does your background and experience prepare you to be a board member? Well, I think my background experience, I have a lot of experience in having to make hard decisions where I wasn't always sure if it was the right or the wrong decision. So because of that, it helped me to learn to really be objective and to really make sure any decision that I make is the right one and to really think about things and make educated decisions. And I think that making educated decisions is probably the most important, one of the most important things about being a board member is that you should never just blindly guess or say, okay, you should really look into what you're doing and make sure that it's an edu educated decision that you are really confident in. So because I've had to do that a lot, I feel that, yeah. Okay. Second question. Okay. What objectives do you wish to accomplish as a board member? Um, to bring people together is, would be my first, to try to find a common ground because at the end of the day, anybody that's interested that and has anything to do with the schools or the school board is there for a reason. And I feel that this school district, this town is very divided, but I do have a lot of faith that there is a common ground. And that would be my first objective, would to be to really try to get to know and understand every perspective and try to find common ground. Okay. I'm sorry, was there more to that question? No, right? I answered no. it? Okay. <laughs> no, however you answer it. It's, okay. It's, okay, thank you. Uh, what is the role of, a, of the school board and what is the role of the, in the, of the individual school board member? The role of a school board is to first and foremost make educated decisions in regards to things that directly affect the school district, but it also affects the town. So I'm trying to think of the best way to sum it up, but you're so, I think that you're supposed to have a lot of different individual members. So as a member, you're supposed to be making your own educated decisions on what is best. You're representing a region. You're supposed to represent the people in your region. Um, and anybody that is affected by the decisions that will be made by the school board. And really you're here to come together to try to make
the best decisions that you can, first and foremost for the kids, second for the community and the taxpayers of the community. Um, again, I think you're supposed to try to, it's supposed to be so everybody comes together, <laughs> even though that's not so much what always happens, but. Okay, thank you. Uh, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? Um, the difference of opinions between people and um, trying honestly to get people to find a common ground and to be willing to find a common ground, trying to get people to be more objective and not so defensive. I feel like a lot of people or in the community and on the board can be defensive and really hold their opinion strong. So I think the hardest thing coming into the board would be to maybe dealing with people like that and still being an understanding, compassionate person mm -hmm. and be willing to listen. So I think just being willing to listen and maintaining that would probably be a challenge. Okay. Question five. You may be appointed to a school board position through this process. If you had run for the position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? Um, I would let the community know that I s would see myself as a vessel for them and for their voices and for them to be heard. So I would make sure I'm there for the people and I would make sure that the people know that I'm there to represent them. I'm not here to represent me, just me or myself. I am here for everybody. And when I say the people, I mean everybody in my region, everybody in my community. And most importantly, the kids. I think that the kids, absolutely, I'm here for them. And that those are the two most important things, but make it very known that I'm here for the children and for the people to be a voice for them. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so what the, you don't you can you can stay here over there if you'd like. Yeah. You can leave if you like. It's up to you. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, next candidate, please. Up front here, Mr. Moore. <coughs> right over in there. Howdy. Thank. How you doing? Good evening. All right. You? Good. Good. Th th thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you for coming in for the interviews tonight. How this will work is we're going to ask you a series of five questions. Uh, the board will not debate your answers. Nor, nor will we any ha ask you any follow-up questions. So your answers will be will, your answers back to the questions will be all we're going on. So if, if you're ready for that, I can start with the questions. Okay. Okay. So say question one. How has your background and experience prepared you to be a board member? Well, the, the only experience that I have, I, I've been a uh, public. Uh, I went to public school from. Uh, kindergarten to uh, high school, graduating from North Penn High School in 1975, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, question two. What objectives do you wish to accomplish as a board member? Uh, I, um... I don't know what all the procedures would be done during the school board uh, meeting. I've never been to a school board meeting. So I don't know what kind of objective I would have offhand. Okay. Okay, question three. What is the role of the school board and what is the role of an individual school board member? I believe the role of the school board is for 
uh, the political, perhaps, aspect of uh, uh, the running of a uh, the school district. And uh, the, uh, the school board member would be uh, the participation in the movement uh, of, the, of the school board. Okay, question four. What do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? Uh, the greatest challenge is uh, dealing with uh, uh, various uh, views of uh, people, whether on the uh, left or the right. Okay, question five. You may be appointed to the school board through this process. If you had to run for this position, would you have been, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to secure their vote and secure the election? Okay, I'm sorry, could you repeat the question please? I sure can. Uh, you may be appointed to the school board position through this process. If you had to run for this position, what would have been your message to the community in your efforts to, to gain their votes and secure the election? Uh, I believe that uh, if I was running for the position that uh, I would uh, run on a, uh, a fair basis on equality. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay, so, okay, well, uh, that's the end of the questions for you. Uh, okay. You can stay if you would like, uh, and so there's some seats over there for you. Okay. There's, there's no requirement if you don't want to stay. We would contact you if you were the uh, selected individual. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Mr. Brophy, our next candidate is not here, and they are trying to follow up with a phone call. So if you want to go to number nine. Uh, yeah. So let's move to number nine, and we can come hopefully, so hopefully uh, I think Brooke Merker will get here, and we can, we can get with her. Okay, bring him in to uh, number nine, candidate, please. <coughs> Mr. Patton? Hello. Okay, thank you for coming in tonight and, and showing your interest in this board position. Uh, we're going to ask you a series of five questions. Okay. Um, now, a couple things. The board will not ask any follow-up questions of you, nor will we debate your answers. So whatever you tell us is what we're going to be going on. So there won't be you know, any, any back and forth debate. It'll just be what you have to say to answer the questions. Okay. Okay? Uh, question number one. How has your background and experience prepared you to be a board member? Um, my background right now, I've actually sat on the Bullerton Elementary School PTO for four years, uh, two different terms as a treasurer. So I'm... Um, well-rounded with working with the school, working with the administrators um, for the best interest of the students. I actually have a background also in corrections, so problem solving is also a, a good um, trait that I have. Okay, question yep. two. What objectives do you wish to accomplish as a member? As a member, I would like to continue to move the Bordertown School District in a positive direction not just for the next year or so, but set us up for the next 10, 20 years. So I feel that that's something that we should constantly address is not just the t problems today, but plan for the future. So always having the kids' best interests, also the families and the staff with the school district as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, question three. What is the role of the school board and what is the role of an individual school board member? Uh, the role of the school board is to make the best uh, decisions possible for the students, the staff, the families, and the community as a whole uh, for the education and the future of the school district. The board members should be representing the region that they're, that they're from. They should be listening to the people that are in their region, and that's what they should be representing when they come to the board. Uh, question four, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the school board? I think a lack of support. 
I've been to the meetings before where there's only a handful of people. A lot of people would like to step on the sidelines and complain about things, but don't actually want to step up and try to make a change, try to be there to make a positive change. So I think a lack of support is, and that's all the way from the elementary schools, probably all the way up to here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, question five. Okay, you may be appointed to the school board position through this process. If you had to run for this position, what, have, what, what would have been your message to the community, uh, excuse me, the community in your efforts to gain their votes and secure the election? Uh, my message would be that I want to listen to what the people from the region have to say and bring their what their feelings are to the board. Um, obviously, I wouldn't have a hard time or problem campaigning and reaching out and getting together and make people comfortable that they feel that they can come and talk to us about issues that they have, not just go on Facebook or social media. Mm -hmm. To actually have someone that they can come to that will make time for them mm -hmm. to address their concerns. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. That's the five questions. If you'd like to stay, there are seats over there, so you can stay to, to the end here. And if you would be the candidate, we would get a hold of you if you wanted to leave. Yeah. So thank it's you. entirely up to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last candidate was Drew. Okay. So that's that is the uh, process there. I believe the next portion is uh, public comment. Okay. We're now in a public comment period number one, up to 30 minutes of duration. I have to read this first. Okay. Please join us for the school board for the school board directors meeting Thursday, January 6th. Yes. Is this the right one here? It should be is it under public comment one? Yeah. Oh. It doesn't sound like the right. Okay. Yeah, it didn't sound like the right one. Thanks. Okay. On behalf of the school board of directors, I would like to welcome you to this meeting. We welcome your attendance and input from stakeholders to assist us in making recommendations and decisions related to the Boyertown Area School District. The process and rules for public participation are detailed in BS, BASD Board Policy 06. This document is available at, the, at, at the, this meeting and on the at BSD website. Participants, participants properly registered in the sign-up sheet will be recognized by the presiding officer. Public comment number one is limited to topics of tonight's agenda. Participants must preface their comments by announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if that is appropriate. All statements, inquiries, or comments shall be directed to the presiding officer. No participant may address an individual board member individually administrative team members individually, school employees, or members of the public individually. Note that we value, value and will not compromise the policy of our students and staff. Please see us outside the realm of the public meeting if you have a concern about an individual staff member or student. If your public comment includes a question, Mrs. Torsha or a member of her staff will be in contact with you to confirm the question and provide you with information. Comments are limited to three minutes and the comment periods are limited to 30 minutes. Individuals may indicate a desire to speak a second time if there is time left in the 30 minute period. Finally, note that we do not record our board or committee meetings and we post them on YouTube with a link to our website. We request that if you do wish to take pictures or record the meeting yourself, please do in such a non-disruptive non manner and for use of those materials respectfully and responsibly. Thank you. Okay. 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 Uh, first, uh, first speaker would be Donnie Savage. Hi, everyone. Hello. Thanks for listening to me again. I've been here a couple of times lately. I'm Donnie Savage from Upper Frederick Township. I served on the board for ten years, from 2009 to 2019. I'm here to ask you to take your role very seriously in selecting among the candidates to board to fill the board vacancy created by Kristen Lord's resignation. When someone resigns from the board, the right of the voters to choose their board representatives is taken away. And this is not the first time that someone in Region 1 has resigned quickly. In fact, 
over the past 13 years, all three resignations that have happened, and they've all happened within the last six years, have come from Region 3. And because of the timing of Kristen's resignation, this person will serve a full two years. So it's so important to take it seriously. So think about, things to think about. First, please consider carefully the candidate's commitment to the job. Do they have the time to dedicate to the board? Why did they not campaign in 2021? It's a necessary evil that none of us like, but it does demonstrate a great level of commitment. What have they been doing since they decided to apply? Have they been cramming to understand the role of the board and the individual board members, or have they not? You all had nearly a year of campaigning to figure all that out. And even given that much time, many people get on the board not understanding a lot about the basic role of the board that, that is to ensure a thorough and efficient system of education at Boyertown, or how a board operates as a team of 10 with the superintendent, or the difference between local and state authority and the many other complexities of the job. There's a lot to learn. Second, please consider the motivations for wanting the job. Is it about supporting publication? Is it about ensuring an equitable educational opportunity for all of our community's children? Is it to find more efficient ways to deliver education at Boyertown? Or is it politically driven? To the board member who is fond of saying, it's not supposed to be political, but hey folks, who are we kidding, it is. I say, you don't understand me, and an opinion, in my opinion, you don't understand most of the people in this community. Many of us are affiliated with one of the two major political parties, that is true. But among other things, in Pennsylvania, that's the only way to have an opportunity to vote in primary elections. Most of us are not driven by our political ideology. Most of us 30 want, seconds. Most of us want school board members who are here to serve the needs of all students and our entire community above service to their political party. And that truly is the way it used to be. So please, please, please leave your politics out of this important decision and make sure the person you choose will truly be here in service to our students and our community above all else. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, second speaker, John Amy. John Amy, New Hanover Township, and if I'm on that list twice, I apologize, I didn't know. I, I signed up via email and I didn't. No, you're just going once. Okay, okay, that's good, great, thank you. Um, I can't really add much to what, what Miss You Savage said, except that she laid a lot of stuff that you really have to consider. This, like, like she's, the main thing is like she said, this person is going to serve almost the full two years. Or well, actually, they are going to pretty much serve the whole full two years. They're, they're going to they're going to be part and party right off the bat to some major decisions that have to be made. My only suggestion is I know you've got it on the uh, agenda to make a decision tonight. I can tell you sitting here after listening to all of them, there's um, things I liked about what many of them had to say. I don't think I can make a decision right now. I ask you, I know you're under time pressure because I think you have to fill the position by next Wednesday. Um, I'd ask you to deliberate over the weekend amongst yourselves and then uh, delay this decision until first thing at the meeting on, on next Tuesday. That's my request. And it also potentially gives people who weren't here tonight a chance to look at the video and make their decision, you know, potentially feed you back some information in the e you know, feed you back some recommendations or some um, things to think about in, uh, in emails. And I, I heard that the one candidate that couldn't speak was trying to get here, and I don't know how you're going to make arrangements for her, or is she just out because she couldn't be here today? But if if that that would be give you an opportunity to potentially get her in as well. But that's all I have to say is it's a tough decision. I don't envy you. It's an important decision. My one recommendation is to wait till Tuesday to make the final decision. Thank you. Okay, and Nicole Zellix, please. She withdrew. <coughs> Nicole Zelks, Colbert, Colbert Dale Township. Um, I'm asking the board to hold off making a decision tonight until Tuesday night's meeting. I think it would be unfair to the community for you to make a decision without community input. I also think it would be unfair to the applicants for you to make a decision without truly thinking, reviewing, and really examining what they said. Um, I think making a decision tonight is hasty. Um, so I am going to request that this vote be held 
on Tuesday night's meeting, which would still be within the 30 days. I also want to address um, the, what, the optics of all this, um, because this is what's being talked about in the community, um, about a, a candidate who won the election, took the seat, and then a week later resigned. And the fact that now a board, the board is going to make a decision without community input does not look good. Um, I, as a resident of Region 1, should have a say in who, who you put on the board. I understand it's your vote, but my opinion should be still be taken into consideration. There are six members on this board who do not live in Region 1, but yet this person is going to represent me and you want to make a decision without my input is just not right. Um, I also want to put the fact that people might have actually been able to come tonight and speak tonight and put their opinion. However, when the notification originally went out, there was no public comment. And that didn't change till late this morning, where people had already had their days planned and maybe couldn't make arrangements to be here. So I think on transparency and fairness, it would be best for this decision and this vote to be held on Tuesday. Thank you for your time. Okay, this is part where they go to the president's report. And it's the spot. Okay, so nomination for region one. School board director vacancy. I will call for nominations to fill region one school board director vacancy created by the resignation of Ms. Kirsten. Mr. Sultanic. Yes, sir. Do I, in this process, do I allow board discussion at this time and have the board members discuss what they believe? You could do one of two things. You could request for nominations. Mm -hmm. You could request that each board member perhaps share their top choice and see if there is consensus amongst the board. Um, uh, you could uh, also just simply, as I said before, just request nominations and um, a motion to close nominations and see where this will head from the group. But it, it may be that the best thing to narrow maybe the, the list down is to see whose first choice each board member has uh, of the, I didn't count the candidates, the ex-candidates who appeared for, appeared and uh, presented their cases tonight. Okay, so there wouldn't be much difference then between uh, asking for the top candidate and just asking for nominations, pretty much. Uh, what I'm looking for is, do we have any discussion among the board members about any, any different candidates, uh, or is that not part of the process? Uh, I, I had, I, 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 you, you went out for a second. So, what's not part of the process? It, it, the having the having the individual board members discuss candidates or anything about the candidates. That might be you stepping can, outside the process. You, I don't want to do that. Individual board members could discuss candidates, but you know, candidly, uh, doing that in a public forum is not the easiest thing to do diplomatically under the circumstances. What most boards tend to do is they request individual board members to say who their top preference is, and that may have the net effect of reducing the list. Okay. But that's your call. You have yeah. great flexibility in <laughs> what you want to do under these circumstances. 
and yeah, I'm, I'm going to at this time ask the board members to give me their top choice. Um, go and I guess go around the room in the roll call. Just, just the one. Just for one. Mr. Zawada. Marianne Scott. Mr. Penarello. Tara Pressman. Ms. Hogan. Joe Kincaid. Mr. Hemingway. I'm going to say Mr. Howe. Ms. Deeroff. Mr. Howe. Ms. Nyman. Mrs. Stapleton. Mr. Updegrove. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Brophy. Mr. Halk. As the result of the names received, uh, has anybody tallied? I, it was hard for me to hear as to, are there, is there any commonality? There are three nominations for applicant Hauk, two nom nominations for applicant Kincaid, one nomination for applicant Scott, one nomination for applicant uh, Chrisman, and one applicant for applicant Stapleton. So at this point, we proceed by taking off what? How, how, who do we eliminate? Mr. Mr. Uh, Sultani? Okay. You would the okay. Okay, I, got, I have the paper. Okay. We should probably close the nominations first. Pardon? Close the nominations. Oh, we didn't nominate yet. We didn't nominate anybody else. Yeah. We, we, we have to, we're into a round two. Is what it looks like. Is that, is that, am I correct, Mr. Sultanic? We're into a round two at this point. Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, are we into it? Like uh, we're we're moving into a round two technically now, correct? Are we? Uh, unfortunately, if somebody can, who's closer to the speaker. Oh. Let me try this. Uh, Move a little bit closer. So theoretically, right now, we do not have a majority on anybody. So at this point, we would move into a round two of the votes, and we'd have to take some people off. Is that correct? You, you can do it any way. There's no, there's no uh, written or uh, approved procedure to address this issue. But clearly, if the board is going to be making this decision, um, we're going to need to get the list down from what is it we have five possible candidates yes. mm -hmm. we need to get the list down to as close maybe as two or three to have a chance to get a majority of five people to do that so perhaps the best question to ask the board is anybody willing to shift or change their recommendation so as to perhaps inch closer to a majority number on the board. Okay, okay. well, I'm looking at the procedure here also, and it says that, that, that for, uh, I'm, I'm looking at the example where it says candidate A, B, and C have two votes each, D, E, and F have one, one, and zero. So it's, it's saying that the only candidates we go in were the candidates with the most votes. Uh, if I look at our, our list here versus that, we have a candidate with three, a candidate with two, 
uh, and then a couple candidates with one. Would we move to the just the candidate of three and two? If the board is comfortable with going with that procedure, we've done that in Boyertown before. We've reduced that list, but the school board is not bound to the procedures that we had followed in the past. Okay. All right, so at this but, point, I, I should ask this, the board members, are you willing to, to follow this procedure as we start weeding down the number of candidates and we can move forward with that? Sure. That procedure you're following, is that from the Pennsylvania School Board Association? Uh, I believe it's Or is a, that just a po one of I our think policies? It's a, I think it's a border town policy. I wouldn't say a policy. No, no. I, I know the history of that. Yeah. That is not from the PSBA. Okay. That, that's something that I developed in the past with the board approval uh, in terms of a procedure that we had used in the past to whittle this down. Uh, I will tell you. Uh, a number of board members who have been here for a while know that this is not a new issue for Boyertown, and um, uh, we have used methods like this to whittle down the list. But there's nothing that's prescribed under the law, there's nothing in the school code, and then there's nothing, I, to the best of my knowledge, that PSBA recommends. We have to have five votes. That's, it's got to be a majority of the remaining board members, which will be five. That is correct. Okay. Is that is any, correct. Okay. Is anybody opposed to starting to whittle, this, to whittle it down that way? Or has anybody got something else they would like to add or suggest? Mr. President, I, is there any way to move this till next Tuesday night? place a vote not particularly I, okay. I would rather get Just through that. here uh, especially since it's the fact that I just at this point still don't have have full confidence that we'll get to a single individual tonight I would not want to run into that on Tuesday when we run up against our 30 30 day limit that is why we're that's why we're trying to do it now and not move up against the limit and have a judge select our, our next board member thank you thanks thanks for the question Any other any other thoughts, suggestions? If we go, I'm sorry. Okay. I don't have any problem following the procedure we followed before. Okay. Rather than starting something new again. Okay. If if we follow this procedure, the only two the only two people who are now up for voting would be Mr. Kincaid and Mr. Hoff. I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with moving forward on that before we before I move us forward on that. Anyone uncomfortable? Okay. So, what would be your what would your suggestion be? I don't know. Should we go to the second step and discuss it? Okay. Why 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 is somebody in favor of that person? Pardon? That's you can anybody wants to have that discussion. I can I can open that up, uh, and Mr. Sultanic, uh, Mr. Sultanic. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, it's the question's been asked. Can I can I open the floor up so people can so board members can talk about different candidates. It has to be in public. I understand that there there can be no sidebar or executive sessions. Everything has to be public. That is correct. But I could I could allow that at this point if someone wants to advocate. Absolutely. Okay, then I will do that. If someone wants to speak up and advocate for for an individual individual applicant, Judge Diamond. Um, hearing all eight of these people, it is a tough decision. However, the one that stands out for me is Mrs. Stapleton, because she's all about the kids. Not that some of the others weren't, 
but she's all about the kids. She deals with the kids, she sees the kids, she deals with the parents. Mm -hmm. And um, that's my choice. And I think that's a, that's a good choice. Very well known in the community. Mr. Mr. Reptigrove? I'm advocating for uh, Mr. Kincaid. Mm -hmm. I took his business background into consideration, being so this school district has to be run almost like a business with checks and balances. And it's all about the kids mm -hmm. and balancing that budget at the end of the day. The best for the kids and whatever the community can afford, checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I had like a one and a one eight here. <clears throat> so after listening to everybody tonight and reading their uh, what they had handed in to us, I actually had Tara was my one and Kevin Patton was my one uh, A. And the reason I had them at that was because they've both already been donating time here. He's on the PTO. Tara was a coach and taught here a little bit. And they're both parents here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's going to make us a good school board person. But ultimately, it went to Tara. But it was a 1 and 1A for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey. Thank you, Mr. Brophy. Um, mm -hmm. So I just I wanted to thank everyone for coming out and everyone who applied. Um, it's much appreciated. And it is a hard decision. Um, at the end of the day, um, I chose Mr. Kincaid because something he said fiscal responsibility is one of our greatest challenges, and I agree um, that it is. And he's also a parent; he has a kindergarten student and a second grader. So, um, you know, those are those are young young ones. Um, he also talked about owning businesses, which I think does give you a good idea on checks and balances, as Mr. Uptergrove said. Um, and he talked about, you know, that he has many nieces and nephews, like he, he has a lot invested in the district, um, and also fostering good community relations, which I think is really important. But I, like I said, it's a hard choice, and it's, mm -hmm. it's um, I'm really thankful to everyone who came out and applied and interviewed, so thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll advocate for Mr. Hulk. Uh, he's been a, he's been on a board of directors already at some point. He's been a chairman of of a, of a company at some point. Uh, he's been a director. He's got forty five years of experience in business. Uh, also, that's that I think gives him advantage to be a board member because uh, he's got the experience of oversight and guidance, and that's something that we could always use on this board, on any board. So that's my reason for Mr. Houck. So Jeff, do we need to go take the entire list again and go through it? How would that work? Uh, once again, <laughs> I hate to say it, there's no <laughs> rules to this other than if you want to follow the procedures that we previously used mm -hmm. under the circumstances and see if there are five board members and you can ask are there five board members that would support the you already know um that who is the individual who got the three votes that's mr Hal. So you can ask the question for him and the second highest vote getter. Uh, well, clearly for the highest vote getter, you need two additional individuals who would be willing mm -hmm. to change their vote to him to get to a majority. And you could ask that question. Okay. Are there, you know, are, are there people willing to modify their positions? Because ultimately, if nobody is willing to modify their positions as the result of the discussion, and it's either their candidate or the highway, we're not gonna be able to uh, make an appointment. So somebody's going to need to change to get to a majority. 
But if we follow the other process where we whittle it down to just the two left, doesn't that force a decision on each board member? Ultimately, yes, if the board is comfortable on that, doing that procedure. Because essentially, if you whittle down the list of the, those two individuals, then an individual who is proposing somebody else who is not the two top highest vote getters, then effectively they're going to need to change their position. My preference would be to follow the, the past past precedents of what we used. That would be my 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 personal preference here. Oh, that, but my personal preference is only one person of nine. So, what I what I need from the board is or is is the is the board willing to do to whittle down, or does the board want to go through continual rotations with all the people still in there, which I quite honestly don't think will accomplish much. So, Tony, I mean, Mr. Farrell. After everyone said their piece, why don't you just do it one more time, and if you don't get what you need to get out of it, no one changes their vote, then you go whittle it down. Mr. Zawala? I suggest we just vote now, or if anybody's willing to change their vote. And go from there, but so I'll just go around. Yes, I can do that. Is that is that acceptable? Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I just wanted to clarify: Are we voting on the two, or are we voting on anyone? I uh, I think it's still anyone okay. at this point for for this round only. I'm okay. only going to do one more round of everyone. I'll be I'll be totally honest with you. If we don't move, I'm not going to sit here all night at a stalemate because okay. that does, it doesn't help anybody or accomplish anything. Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll go around one more time uh, with everybody involved. And then I think at that point in time, we'll start, to, we're going to do, we're gonna do, do a whittle down. Now, I'm not sure how the whittle down is going to work. It might not be the same people, so. Uh, you know, but M Mr. Zawada. Mr. Howe. Mr. Pinarello. Tyra Christman. Ms. Hogan. Joseph Kincaid. Mr. Hemingway. Mr. Halk. Ms. Deeroff. Halk. Ms. Nyman. Mrs. Stapleton. Mr. Updegrove. Joseph Kincaid. Mr. Brophy. Halk. The tally is four Halk, two Kincaid, one Chrisman, one Stapleton. Okay. So. So at this point, then we would go to whittling down to the top two, which are Mr. Mr. Kincaid and Mr. Halk. Is there any opposition to that? Well, what is it you want us to do? Then at this point, I think we should wait, hear from the constituents in Region One, and see what they want to do. No. <laughs> not going to do that. I'll be per I'll be point blank on that. We won't do that. Well, I guess we're going to have a judge decide. No, we're not. We're going to decide right now. I'm going to go around for a vote on the two people, Mr. Hawk and Mr. Kincaid. I'm not going to hold hostage the entire district, which is what you want me to do. That's not the entire sure it is. Okay. For one board member, that's why I'm doing. So which 49,900 do you want me to listen to? We are going to finish this vote tonight because we're not going to have a judge decide who's going to be in that seat. So we will move on. We're going to go between Mr. Hawk and Mr. Kincaid. <coughs> Okay, can we please? Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just wanted to suggest, can we just maybe take like a two or three minute break to just review both of their applications again? I'm very open to that. If somebody would like, I, I can tell you what, I'll give you a 15 minute break. 
How's that? That's fine with me. 15 minute break, look everything over. You get back here in 15 minutes. Quarter after seven. Thank you. Yeah, perfectly all right. I'll remember yet. We had the 15 minutes there. Uh, I'd like to move on, if that's possible. Uh, move on with the two candidates. Sure. In dealing with transparency, I heard basically most of the candidates talk about the kids. However, in Mr. Houck's presentation, there wasn't anything about the kids, what it's meant to the kids. And that's sad. That's sad because we're supposed to be putting the kids first. That, that's heartbreaking. Any other comments? Okay. At this point, we moved it. I'm going to move down the selection to the two top vote getters, which are Mr. Halk and Mr. Kincaid. So, could we do a roll call vote, please? This would be this would be round three. Mr. Zawada. Mr. Howe. Mr. Panarello. Mr. Kincaid. Ms. Hogan. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Hemingway. Mr. Hauk. Ms. Deroff. Mr. Hauk. Ms. Nyman. I have to vote for one of them, or can I abstain, Mr. Sultan? You have to vote for one. Uh, Mr. Sultanic. Mr. Sultanic, does a board member have to vote, or can they abstain? They can abstain. I'm going to abstain for the reason that I need two candidates for the children, and the one is not a candidate for the children. Mr. Updegrove. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Brophy. Mr. Houck. Four votes for Mr. Houck, three for Kincaid. One abstention. Is anyone at this time willing to change their vote? We still do not have five. I'll go to Kincaid. Four, four. Okay. But as I'm saying, this is still wrong. There's a backdoor deal going on here, and I'm not liking it. Is that an accusation, Mrs. K Mrs. Nyman? From a from a sitting board member. Okay, we're right at 4-4. Four, four. Is anyone willing to change their vote one way or the other? Take a 10 minute recess, think about it again. We'll come back and take another vote. Okay, one more round. Oh, sorry. Cold order, one more round. Two candidates Mr. Hawk and Mr. Kincaid. Start with the roll call. Mr. Zavada. Mr. Howe. Mr. Penarello. Mr. Kincaid. Ms. Hogan. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Hemingway. Mr. Howe. 
Ms. Giroff. Mr. Howe. Ms. Nyman. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Updegrove. Mr. Kincaid. Mr. Brophy. Mr. Howe. So deadlock continues. I'm not going to prolong this anymore tonight. We will move. Our 30 days are up on the 14th of January. We will move this to vote <coughs> only the two candidates still in on the 11th and move forward on that. So everybody has about five days to think about it and think what they want to do and review anything they would like. I don't think I closed them. I closed. I don't close nominations, do I? We didn't get it. We, didn't do we it. never got a. We didn't do it, so we don't go. We don't go to close nominations. So the nomination is still open, and the nomination will be open until the end of the meeting on Tuesday. Hopefully, no longer. Yeah. Okay. So you say nominations are still open, just for those two, correct? Just for those two. Yes. Do we need to? take any like official action as a board to just close to only have those two as no for nominations it's okay no, that's it. they're, they're the only two they're only two in i can make that okay that's fine i can make that moving forward yeah. going on for i just didn't know if there was like no, procedurally no, you. something okay. you that's know fine. okay i nominate to adjourn any seconds second okay meeting adjourned <laughs>